From publicly blasting your star player for celebrating their 30th goal, to saying that your team has been playing without balls, here are 10 times that NHL coaches called out a player over their team. Patrick Waugh had something to say about Matt Duchesne celebrating while the team was losing. The Avs were losing 4 0 with about 4 minutes left in the game when Duchesne scored his 30th goal of the season. The Selly was mild compared to what it could have been, but Wall wasn't having any of it. In fact, during a post game interview, he just let it fly that it's a 4 0 goal. Big cheer. You're kidding me. What is that? Wall has said. Most times, coaches will keep their comments about players out of the media, but Wall wanted to whine and say, Wah, wah, wah. Obviously, calling out a single player is a lot harsher than just calling out the entire team like this next coach. And honestly, probably every coach. But Michelle Tyrion was not impressed by the way his team started off the season by losing 8 of his first 11 games as a coach. And so, he decided he wanted to get a response from his team. Their 3-1 loss against the Oilers at home had him saying that he wondered if their goal is to be the worst defense squad in the league. And compared to some of his other comments, this was relatively soft. For instance, he called the defensemen soft and suggested cutting their salary because they only play 50% of the time. And that right there, folks, is how you lose the respect of your entire team in less than 30 seconds. But he went even further saying that, quote, they make my job miserable. So it's a give and take. What can I do? And I'm just going to say that if that doesn't get the team to wake up, then I just, I don't know what will. They're not going to wake up. And in all honesty, they really haven't woken up in the past couple of years. So there you go. But yelling at them probably would have hurt less than having your coach say he's disappointed in you. Some coaches have immense patience when it comes to certain players and their antics. Just ask Craig Berube. Good old Jordan Bennington is known for his meltdowns trying to take it on players, swinging his stick at the opponent, and using blockers as a weapon is just plain old chirping when he's losing. He's certainly good at all of those, and not everyone is a fan of his meltdowns. But Berube finally had enough one night after he got away with hitting Zucker with his glove. Zucker got the last laugh though because he later scored a goal that ended up getting him pulled. And it was during the second period, so the team switched ends, and that meant that Bennington would have to skate past the Penguins bench in a skate of shame. And instead of just accepting that he was pulled, he had to trip the bench, and the refs handed out a 10-minute misconduct penalty. During the post-game interview, Berube addressed Bennington's meltdown and said, It's gotta stop. It doesn't help anything. Just play goal. Stop the puck. And one really has to wonder what the team thinks when he has all of his outbursts for no reason. Fun fact, the last player to not wear a helmet during a game was Craig McTavish. Only bringing up the facts because he's the next coach we gotta talk about. McTavish called out Dustin Penner during a radio interview for not trying hard enough when he was with the Oilers. He even told the Edmonton Sun, quote, Penner's not competitive enough or fit enough to help us. So why put him back in? He's never been fit enough to help us. Keep in mind that Penner signed a 5-year $21 million contract but only averaged half a point per game for the 2007 season. Is it just me or does someone smell hot dogs because that sounds like Phil Kessel over there? But now we will continue McTavish's quote. He went to say, We thought that the contract was a starting point and he's viewed it as a finish line. It's been one thing after another, and I can't watch it for certainly not another two and a half years. But he wasn't even finished with that quote, because he continued by saying, you can't just continue to throw gratuitous ice time at a guy that is that inconsistent. He lacks the horsepower. Penner got the last laugh when he won a Stanley Cup with the Kings a season after being traded from the Oilers. Man, is it just me or do the Oilers stink? I guess I can't say that now that they're in the playoffs round two. Yeah, you caught me. I'm just a rotten old Flames fan. But the Maple Leafs have some insane firepower and head coach Sheldon Keefe expects a lot from them, as he should. He decided to call out a few players, but he especially went after the captain during an interview. The Maple Leafs lost to the Devils 6-3 despite outshooting them 45-25. 
and obviously that upset Keith a little bit. During an interview, he said, I thought we just overdid it. It was just real immature all the way throughout the game. I thought it was immature from our most experienced players, our leaders. He told the reporters that the most immature players are the most inexperienced players, but he didn't like the veteran guys making themselves look like the poor examples. The goalie was not excluded and he called him out for letting in the first shot of the game, that being back-to-back -back games he let in the first goal. He called out a defender for not doing his job and gave up on the two-on-one. He even called out the captain, saying that John Tavares has been the example for us. He's been outstanding for us for a long period of time. He just got himself carried away. That's our captain. So if that's gonna happen, well, the rest of our bench is just gonna make it up as we go. Tavares was not included in the post-game interview, but I can imagine he did not like being called out like that. The only thing Keefe was missing was yelling while he ripped his team apart for the entire world to see. And year after year we see the same old thing and the truth of the matter is that Keefe is probably not wrong about these claims. Maybe publicly shaming them is a strategy to make them cooperate, but I don't know. Let us know in the comments what you think. The next coach criticizing his team through the media was sort of funny. John Tortorella went on about how the Blue Jackets sucked and held nothing back, really. He was asked about how the team would do against the Jets, and he responded by saying, it's a good team. It's a good team we're playing, and it was a god-awful team I coached the other night. So hopefully, we'll answer the proper way. When asked about how the team was going to get over the hump, and if it was physical or mental, Torts responded by saying, well, I'll just go back to our last game. It was mental, it was physical, anything you wanna name it, it was that. There was a team that threw their uniforms out to play. I didn't realize how, how poorly we thought the game, how playing with no balls at all in the game until I really broke down the video. Damn, Torts. Line up the team, drive a bus all over them, reverse and then drive all over them again, why don't you? And I think his players actually got off pretty easy because we all know he really wanted to say a lot more about their poor performance. And we're gonna stick with Torch for the next one, because why the hell not? Here he is from this season calling out the Flyers. The Flyers were playing the Islanders, and Torch decided to switch the goalies at the start of the second period. During the post-game interview, he was asked to assess the team, and he called them out instead. He called them soft, and the only player that showed up was the goalie who started in the second period. He then called out certain players that just don't have a clue how to play hockey, or just don't have it in them to play in these types of situations. And of course, he couldn't have an interview without throwing out the insult about the players not having balls to play the game. Sounds like we just need Torts on the ice after all. At least Torts complimented the goalie, unlike Elaine Vigneault. The Rangers announced back in 2018 that they were in a sell mode, leading up to the trade deadline. Hearing that, Vigneault decided to say something about it during an interview. When he tried to explain why the Rangers were inconsistent, he decided to throw the legendary goal stopper Henrik Lundqvist under the bus. Because why blame the guys who are playing horribly in front of the crease when he can blame the best goal stopper the team has ever had? Lundqvist had been the rock for the team, and he bailed out the team so many times. So Vigneault decided to say, I believe that we're a goaltender getting on a roll here to being back in the hunt and being back into the playoffs. We started our season 4-7-2 and we were a little inconsistent in the goaltending department. I felt that we were playing better than our record indicated. Goaltending got better. We went on an 18-7-3 run, came back from the bye week, and since that, we've been on a 3-10 run. A little inconsistent in the goaltending department. Henrik has been working with Ben. I'm sure that their hard work together will pay off. Can I just say that if you're gonna blame anyone here, it's not smart to blame the goaltender who's bailed them out all of those years again and again. And honestly, even if he was playing inconsistent, you don't have to let anybody else know that after all of these years of his pride and effort being shown year after year. Man's now in the Hall of Fame. What are you gonna say now, Vino? John Paddock also called out a goalie through the media, but he blamed the goalie for his work ethic instead. Paddock, 
had enough of Emery's work ethic back in 2007, so he decided to publicly speak out about it. Emery missed too much training camp, he said. Whether you're a goaltender or a position player, you gotta work hard like anybody else does. I just think that there's gotta be more output and more energy to get a guy's game back. He could be a lot more confident in net if he'd spend more time working with goaltending coach Ellie Wilson. He's going through the motions and everyone's seen it. Paddock told the media that there had been issues in the past regarding Emery's work ethic at practice, but because he was putting up consistent numbers, he could get more slack from the coaches. If you aren't playing, you have to put more into your game. I think he possibly got the mindset where he was so successful last year, but it's a different year. It's one thing when you're on top of your game and something else when you're not. We need to get more work out of him. He needs to give us cooperation and get his game back and we'll go from there, Paddock said. At the end of the day, you gotta work hard if you want to stay in the NHL. You probably worked hard to get there, so why quit now? The minute you stop working hard is the minute you're out of the NHL. Well, that's all we have for this video, so thanks for watching! Please leave a comment below if we miss any coaches calling out their team and we'll include it in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe or in the words of Matt Martin, go dye your hair. Click the video on the screen to watch the biggest meltdowns in NHL history. And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow. And see you next time.